I'd like to tell two short stories about Gary, and then I'll read you a eulogy from one of his most gifted uh, students, Paris Lampropoulos from New York. And then John Carlton will read a uh, eulogy message from Jay Abraham. And Jay may show up here, but you, you never know. Several decades ago, I was visiting Gary in his home in Malibu. It was the old Peter Lawford home. No, I, I guess it was the Tom Mix home, and next door was the Peter Lawford home. And Gary had come up with an idea for Reader's Digest. I was a friend of the creative director from Reader's Digest who used to come out here and visit with Joe Carbo, and he had a home on Coronado Island down off the, uh, outside of San Diego. <coughs> Well, Gary wanted a flat fee of a million dollars for this idea, and it was in the days, I can't remember the year or even the decade, but it was when computer letters were first starting to be used. And Gary said his deal with Reader's Digest was that he would get a million dollars if he doubled their response on their next mass mailing. And they were very interested. This creative director, Ted Broughton from Reader's Digest, he said, yeah, I think that's a great idea, and I know Gary and his work and his credential. But we went over to his home in Malibu there, and then we presented it to Reader's Digest, but it got messed up, sidetracked in their legal department, and their lawyers were afraid of it. They thought Gary was going to sue them, and they wouldn't sign a paper with us. So that one really didn't, didn't go anywhere. But I, I'm convinced Gary could have written something and had personalized computer letters going out with large type that would have significantly increased their response. I don't know if it would have doubled it, but another time, I was Gary's agent for a couple of years when he was living in L.A., and this guy called me, a wealthy, retired businessman from Chicago who wanted to start a dating service in L.A., and he really wanted to meet women so that he could maybe get married or have a girlfriend or whatever. So Gary wrote this full-page newspaper ad for the fellow. He had a Hollywood office, and after they ran the ad, they didn't let Gary see the final copy. They ran the ad. The guy called me and said, hey, I want you and Gary to come over to my office because we have a major crisis with the ad that Gary had written. So I called Gary. We met at this guy's office somewhere in Hollywood. And the man said, we want our money back, Gary. Your ad failed miserably. We didn't get hardly any responses. And Gary said, well, let me, let me see the ad. So the guy pulled out the ad. They had butchered the ad, made all kinds of changes without talking to Gary. And Gary got very upset and said, don't tell anyone that this was my copy because you changed this comma. You, you, you move this spacing, but the big thing was you changed the headline, and, I, and this was one of my favorite Gary one-liners. He said, what you, what you and your partner here did, you spray-painted the Sistine Chapel <laughs> <laughs> with your editing. Now, a writer in New York who has become very successful and one of the million-dollar copywriters who give Gary a lion's share of the credit, his, 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 his name is Paris Lampropoulos. And Paris was telling me yesterday, when he read Benzavinga's uh, eulogy or obituary about Gary and his bullets, and I was, I was mentioning to John, if you don't have that, you can get it free by writing to uh, John Carlton or writing to me, and you should, you should get Ben Zavinga's free bullet uh, newsletters. He, he was one of the greats, and he paid Gary a lot of attention and credit two years ago at the St. Regis in New York when John Carlton and I were back there and my son Kevin. So I, I, I'll read you this short eulogy from Paris from New York, but he said when he read this, this uh, essay from Ben Zavinga about Gary Halbert, it really choked him up, and he was tearful about it. So he emailed me this yesterday and said he's sorry as far as to the family, Kevin, that he couldn't be here with you. 
We all know that Gary was an amazing teacher. And I think what set him apart from the others is that he didn't just teach things so that you'd understand them on an intellectual level. No, Gary would actually make you experience, and he put experience in italics, the lesson so that you'd feel it deep in the core of your being. I remember at a copywriting seminar in 1996, Gary was trying to impress upon us how two different sales letters could have a drastic difference in response. Now, Gary could have done what most seminar guys do is simply shown us two sales letters and told us that letter one outpulled letter two by 75%. But instead, Gary did something much more powerful. He gave us pens and paper and made us write letters to our mothers. I know a lot of you heard this story, but it's, it's, it's good to recall it. The first letter told mom about how special she was and said, quote, I remember you in that flowered dress you wore on my 10th birthday. As Gary dictated the words and I wrote them down, this is Paris, I pictured my mother getting a big smile on her face when she received my letter. When we were done, Gary had us fold the letter, stuff in an envelope, and got it in the mail. Then he dictated a second letter, which went something like this. Dear Mom, I despise you. You are nothing more than a wrinkled up old bitch. And as far as I'm concerned, the biggest waste of skin God ever created. As you might imagine, the people who did this little exercise really learned the lesson. I've spoken to several people who tell me they saved those letters and still have them 11 years later. I know I still have mine, which brings up the final thing I want to say today. And that's the observation that, quote, all roads lead to Halbert. <laughs> Ask anyone who's successful in this business to name the people who influence them, and I bet every single person names Gary as an influence. For me, that influence was profound. In fact, Gary's the whole reason I became a copywriter. Had I not stumbled upon Gary's writings one day in 1990, I may have never gotten into this business, and who knows where I'd be today. Maybe I'd still be floundering along, dead broke, and trying to figure out what to do with my life. Gary was truly a giant, and we're all going to miss him. I was asking, you know, do you want a discount card or whatever? And he was like, no, 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 I don't like discounts. I always want to spend as much money as possible. Right. My uncle left me millions of dollars, and I just hate money. So any opportunity I have to blow money, I want to blow it. And they're like, okay. <laughs>